putting up candidates is the Socialist Party of Great Britain, and I'm joined by one of their number, Danny Lambert. Welcome Hello. to the programme. You wrote on a local news website, parties promising to do things for others is not my idea of politics, so I'm not making any promises to do anything for anyone. And if you're not making promises, what's the point of standing? The point of standing is, is purely we're, we're a democratic party. Um, we are the most democratic organisation you'll find in the world. Why is that? Um, well, because, one, we have no leaders, and we hold that, in a real democracy, all socially relevant information should be available to everybody. So the more people you've got taking part in the democratic process, the more chance you've got of getting the best result. Right, so how did they decide, or you decide, that you should come on the programme today and not one of your colleagues? Um, I, I'm one of the... Yeah, I'm one of the... on, on the list. Right, and I but you're not the leader. No, 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 we don't have leaders, you no. see. Because leaders need followers, and followers by their very nature are people who don't know where they're going. It doesn't sound very tangible if you're a voter, a prospective voter, looking at policies that you may have to say, why would I vote for you? Well, I mean, what you would be doing, you would be voting for yourself. I mean, we hold that the natural and industrial resources of our planet are the common heritage of all humans. We also hold that as all production is socially carried out, it should be socially controlled and administered by and in the interest of the whole community. How would that dream or aspiration become a reality in it's today's when, world? Well, it's when people actually... Um, become aware of their real identity as human beings when they abandon these spurious identities of colour, of, of, of nationalism, all this kind of nonsense that only exists in our imagination and see themselves for who they really are as members of one human family. Now, in a family that functions, if it is to be a real family, the, 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 the ethic, which is the socialist principle, is followed, which is from each according to ability to each according to need. Now, the great thing about having a common identity, obviously with a common interest, is that you can't abuse, you can't exploit or oppress those that you identify with. All you can do, therefore, is cooperate. And we humans are so much better when we cooperate than when we compete. Right. I mean, I perhaps dispute some of your views about human nature and how that would actually work. I mean, in your manifesto, you say that people might choose to drive a bus or a train, study engineering or become a scientist. What happens if the doctors, for example, and engineers decide they only want to work a few hours a week? Well, they don't... They don't I mean, you see, the thing, the thing is, I mean, we've been listening to, to, to all these problems that face us as... as, as no, 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 let me finish. Sure. As, as and, uh, you know, with, with the health service and, you know, the funding and all this. Now, the problem with our society, because it's a commercial society, we're so busy taking care of business, we don't have time to take care of ourselves. William Morris pointed out at the, at the end of the 19th century that it's more expensive to sell something than it is to make. Now, if we had a society where production was only carried out for use, to meet human need, then we wouldn't need all the bank and insurance, taxation, advertising money, then all the rigmarole, the, the military-industrial complex, the armies, the navies, the air forces. Right. Um, but it hasn't worked, has it? I mean, it, it, that, that form of socialism that you described has never worked. Well, do you tell me where it's been it. tried? Well, I mean, well, exactly. And why has it never been tried? Well, what? <laughs> because it'll never work. Well... <laughs> No, 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 no. I mean, if you take if you take the the experiment that was that, that was carried out in Russia and uh, and the other mm. places that call themselves socialists, I mean, the, there you had all the hallmarks of capitalism. You had wage labour, generalised commodity production. You had bank, international trade. You had money. Oh, uh, so the, all these things are, 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 are capitalistic. So in, in places like the Soviet Union, it was state capitalism. So it was never tried in the sense that you're that you're um, outlining. How are you different? How's your party different from others on the left, like the Trades Union Socialist Coalition, like Respect, like the Socialist Labour Party? Well, I mean, a lot of the people on the left, uh, when they put forward what their idea of socialism is, is basically what they say is that there's nothing wrong with capitalism that can't be cured by, by getting rid of the capitalists and putting us in charge. Because, you know, they... I mean, they're utopian in the extreme because they, they think that capitalism can be run in the interest of working people. Now, you might as well think that you can run an avatar in the interest of the animals it, it slaughters. Because capitalism is all about exploitation, the, the term employment, to exploit, to use, to take advantage of. All right. Danny Lambert, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to you, Maureen, for thank being you. our guest of the day.